games. <laughs> okay. What's possible, people? Today, um, as you can see, it's Moroccan style. Um, yeah. Sit down, enjoy, listen. I am going to take you with me on my first solo adventure and the whole experience. I have some pictures, I have some stories, I have some old videos. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go. <laughs> So, today I'm gonna explain um, how my first solo experience was and yeah, let's just start with a little clip on the arrival. First five minutes like a 30 kg watermelon. <laughs> I don't know where the taxi guy is but yeah, we are just chilling. So as you can see, I took a plane, okay you can't see that, but you can think about it. I took a plane, uh, that was pretty stressful, because I was at the time I think 15 or 16, it's two years ago, so I was 15, I was turning 16, and you know, just taking a plane all by yourself to Africa is stressful, I can tell you that. <clears throat> And then I took a taxi and as you can see the taxi stopped and they got out so yeah that's that. I was on the way to a small village called Imlil. It's like two hours from Marrakesh um, into the north uh, and it's like a Berber village um, and a lot of trekking stuff happens there so yeah. That's where I was heading. Uh, I will give you a little background story um, on how I came about on going to Morocco alone uh, at 15. So yeah, then we have to go back, mm, what is it, I think three years, oh, two and a half, yeah, two, two, almost three, almost three, two and a half years. And this is a picture, I don't know if you can see it. This is a picture and uh, it's a picture of me sitting on top of the Tupkal. Uh, the Tupkal is the highest mountain in North Africa. It's 4167 meters or something, I don't know. Um, and the way I got there was uh, I was feeling, I've always had difficulty in school and I was feeling really really bad at the time and my mother also was in a like, she didn't really know what to do with her job and stuff so she went to Morocco a couple months um, you know, previous and she came back and she told me like damn we have to go and then a couple of months later I was really feeling you know bad in school and yeah was I wasn't in a good place and it was either going you know doing that or going to a hospital and um, yeah a clinic and you know, that's not that's not really where you want to be so um, I said yes uh, and my mother and I we went on a trip to Morocco with the same guide that she had and we walked for a whole week and it completely changed my life. Um, I had been through like a lot of, a lot, a lot, yeah, yeah I can say a lot, a lot of schools, a lot of uh, things and this picture represents leaving all of it behind and really starting a new chapter. Uh, and it's a strong picture for me just because all of the emotions of the first 15 years of my life and I mean, sounds silly, but they're in this stone. So, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so, I took um, like a stone in the beginning of the week and put it in my backpack and then at the end of the week at the top of the mountain I just stood there and um, I really just, uh, you know, 
I literally threw everything off of the mountain and just left it there and I came back as a different person um, so that's that <laughs> and it literally changed me and then I went on and did a lot of different stuff uh, in Belgium um, did some volunteering work and then went back to school and blah 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 but this story is about the summer that I went on my solo trip so this was in like I think April 2017 and yeah I'll have to check dates but so that's that now you know why I went to Morocco of all places so my journey began I wanted to go on an adventure and I wanted to do it alone um, why I, I mean I just like challenging myself and at the time that was a big big challenge and I told myself I want to go there and I want to go there alone so my parents they said like yeah I don't know they said okay <laughs> but uh, you have to know that the guide that um, guided my mom and me uh, so on on the first track he uh, I could stay there so he could um, I I was I went alone but I had a place to go if you know what I mean so this is a picture of Hassan it's the son of the guide and I did the tube call again with him so that's just I could go a place uh, and that's also where the taxi went so Imnil they live in a small village oh damn I don't know the name anymore yeah it's just in the mountains um, so wanted to challenge myself to complain stressful went there went to the village and then it all started okay first days were like the hardest thing I've ever experienced just because it was so stressful and you know I really underestimated the stress that was going to happen of you know just taking a plane going to Africa not speaking the language um, not really knowing uh, how my because I was there for two weeks how everything was going to happen and the things I um, was going to do because you know I didn't really plan anything so it was a little difficult for me uh, and the first days literally I cried like a baby <laughs> I I don't know why but I was just devastated I couldn't eat just from having so much stress and I really there were a lot of people in the village but I felt like alone I felt really alone because no one understood me like I could talk in English but if there are a hundred people maybe one or two or maybe five can speak decent English so that's so so tiring and also talking English really uh, sucks up a lot of energy because I'm not used to it I'm not used to it uh, and at a point I, I, I really considered going home because it was just it was not it was not fun but then I called with my parents uh, as you do if you're 15 and you are alone in Africa I think um, and they told me to just you know kind of they didn't say talk to yourself but I made it that just make a good planning so weak planning and that's obvious but I did it and I didn't want to write everything down so I started kind of a vlog and almost every morning I would go to the rooftop of the house and I would just start talking to the camera and saying okay um, Today I'm gonna go and do this and yesterday we did that and I felt like that and you know just really actually just um, you know it's calming my mind down to 
say you have everything under control and this and this and this is happening and and that really really helped and I'm glad I did it because now I have some footage to show you um yeah I'll just show you in a minute wait yeah you can see the mountain starting to form that's that uh, and this is me talking to myself about Writing it down, but that didn't really work. By the way, I my I just shaved off my hair. Uh, dumbest thing I did in 2018. Um, another video. Let's see this one. Damn, yeah, that's a good one. So this is really this is where I was staying like 90% of the time. Uh, in the village called Imlil is here. That's like the last big, like it's a really small town but um, before the mountains the Atlas mountains and yeah this is then where they lived and uh, this is the view so that's Imlil and that's like the mountain range and the pass and Marrakesh is around here it's like two hours just straight that way And uh, yeah, these are the houses they live in. So I don't know if you can see it. Pretty good. Yeah, you can see it. Um, yeah, and I was living in one of these for the, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so nice. Here I'm talking about how nice uh, everything is, just because yeah, it's just really nice. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a good one. So anyone that knows anything about Morocco or just the Islamic culture, um, they have like a prayer um, uh, each each night at four or five I think don't shoot me if I'm wrong and it sounds like this so they have the mosques around even in the mountains and they just play it's a call to pray uh, yeah wait I will put the uh, sound up So yeah, that's that. Um, okay, that's it. Okay, well, I'm not really good in sitting on the chair, so I'm just gonna, you know, just leave. Um, as I told you, this is a picture of me and Hassan climbing up to the Tukal. This is me with the same jacket on the Tukal. As you can see um, and we can see the sunrise because um, it's a two-day trek so you leave from Imlil and you go to a refuge and the refuge is at 3200 meters or something um, and then you go to sleep you eat and you wake up at 3 3 o'clock in the night and you eat or try to eat because I really couldn't eat uh, just because of the the you know just eh, the, the stress and, and adrenaline and everything uh, but still you try to eat 
and then at 4 you start walking and then approximately at 7 um, you are at the top, 7 or something. Well, what do I have? This one, it's pretty nice. It's, um, I don't know if you can see it. Let me change. Yeah, so this is just a picture of, um, you know, some fields. And they built like in, you know, probably seen it from uh, Bali or something. All of the terrasses because of the mountain. Otherwise, it would all slip down. Um, yeah. So I spent some time with um, with the family of the guide, and. I just really like this picture um, in particular because it just represents how simple everything is and I really like simple stuff so uh, wait I'll put the salt box in this direction for a minute like this now you can see the picture it's just me holding one of the kids um, but I just love walking around on my slippers and, and just, ah, uh, so there's nothing to care about and I really love that. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so nice. So, as I told you, I've told some stories now. Uh, oh shit, I forgot one. Okay, wait. No, I'm gonna show you the picture first. So this one's pretty, pretty good. This is a picture, and I don't know if you can see it, but we are standing at like, uh, this is a rooftop of a house, a house, and this is a small kit. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> um, these are the mountains, and Hassan, so again, this is Hassan. We went on a two day mountain biking trip from the mountain ranges to the, you know, this is like a, how do you, how do you call it? Like, it's just the flatlands. Um, and I was really, really exhausted because we, um, you know, we went in one day through the mountains just like that from Imlil all the way from here and then to here so I was really exhausted and then we came here and normally um, normally when you know I go training or I do something with my you know just sports you come home and you expect to eat something to just take a glass of water or just open the, the tap and drink but this really and still reminds me of how good I have it. Um, so we came here after a full day of mountain biking, like 12 or 13 hours. And I want to drink some water. But I can't drink from the tap water because I would get sick. So the only water in whole this area was in a small, small shop. Um, around here. So I... Again, had to take the bike, go all the way because this is pretty high. You have to. This is like, this is like this. So I had to bike all the way down, go through the fields, and I can tell you it's pretty long. Go through the fields, take two bottles of water, return, and then take some rest. Until this day, that really sticks to my mind of like, you know, just the. And. Morocco is literally four hours in a plane. It's it's not far. It's like just over the border of Spain So guys I find it pretty difficult to explain everything and make like a big storyline of the two weeks that I was there and all of the before and after <clears throat> So I think I'm gonna make like a small edit inside of this video um, with some footage I still have and um, to give you kind of an idea of how 
it was there and kind of things we did so but the thing I wanted to show you was um, really that it's not always easy um, traveling and even a lot of people that travel constantly uh, because you see them on Instagram and people that travel for work or I don't know it can still be really anxious and stressful and hard just because you're always in such a different environment um, but when you're out of your comfort zone the most that's when you grow so I also believe in that and I'll keep doing that as you can see yeah I hope you enjoy the video and uh, also the next clips I'll put some music on it and yeah then I'll see you next time with the next story Hier wandelen we naar boven, helemaal naar rechts achter, daar, daar achter is refuge en dat is te kal en is hoger dan dat, dat lijkt niet, maar toch, dat is te kal. Dus morgen gaan we naar daar.